Okay, this video is called Causes of Testicular Atrophy, and it comes from, you know, having seen patients with testicular atrophy and having a lot of guys ask me, how do they increase their testosterone level? Well, to increase your testosterone level, you have to avoid things that cause testicular atrophy. Also, I just want to start with one quote that I really should have included with the last lecture. Um, <clears throat> And it's a, from Rodney Dangerfield, the comedian. He lived from 1921 to 2004. And Rodney Dangerfield said, My doctor told me to drink a lot of fluids and get some rest. So I got drunk and passed out. Yeah, he's one of my favorite comedians. Um, okay, now testicular atrophy. <clears throat> Avoid these to maintain testosterone levels. You don't want to be putting your cell phone in your front pocket. It's a low-power microwave transmitter. You microwave your balls. You don't want to do that. You don't want your laptop computer sitting directly on your crotch because, again, you don't want to microwave your balls, okay? That's rule number one. I see these young guys lifting weights and they got their cell phone, cell phone in their front pocket, you know? It's difficult explaining something to a young guy. They think they know everything. I tell them, you know what? Cell phone in the front pocket, that's counterproductive. Okay, what about a sauna? I'm not a big fan of sauna. I know a lot of people think saunas are great, you know, and I'm not that big of an expert on sauna. I've never studied its effect on testicles, but I do know for testicles, it's not good to be that hot. So I don't like the idea of going in a sauna because you can't control how much you're heating up your testicles other than the temperature of the room. Also, I don't like the idea of sitting in a hot tub. You know, you don't want to heat up your balls. You don't want to fry your balls. It sounds like fried food, you know. This idea of, so <clears throat> I don't like those ideas. You want your testicles to be a little cooler. I know I've said before, I like to be warm when I'm studying or, you know, writing a book chapter, making a video, fine. But I'll wear an extra sweatshirt or maybe an extra sweat jacket, but I don't wear any extra sweatpants or anything warm down there. Uh, a little bit of closer contact to the air uh, keeps them cool, a little bit better testosterone production. Be careful about sexually transmitted diseases. Okay, gonorrhea, chlamydia, they'll cause, epididymitis is the tube that connects, you know, between the prostate and the, uh, well, epididymis is primarily around the testicle, and that gets infected sometimes with sexually transmitted diseases. The testicle, when it's infected, that's called orchitis. So together, the two, when they're infected, are called epididymo-orchitis. You got to be careful who you sleep with. Don't be too promiscuous. You know, I know young guys think it's a joke. My son had a girlfriend, you know, for a long time, close, and they broke up. A week later, he's with another girl. I said, what are you doing? You have to be very careful about who you sleep with. You're going to end up getting a disease if you continue that type of behavior. And he just looked at me and said, oh, I'll cut it out, Dad. You're just jealous. Young guys think it's a joke. It's not a joke. I've seen guys, very sort of handsome and successful guy. You figure this guy can marry whoever he wants. And they marry some woman who not in a million years would you think they would marry that woman. There might be something really special about her, but I also think sometimes what happened to these guys is they got, you know, herpes and other infections down there. And, they, and she puts up with it, whereas some other woman wouldn't put up with it. I call it the herpes marriages. Because I've seen several of those in my life that I just was really surprised by. And I think that's what it was. Some of these guys were really promiscuous. I knew them when they were younger. Okay, um, obesity, fat tissue, adipose tissue has more aromatase enzyme to convert testosterone to estrogen. So being fat is working against you. Those man boobs, moobs, they're not just fat. They're also estrogenic component, gynecomastia, increased prominence of the breast ductal glands <clears throat> due to ex excess estrogen. Excessive iron... For example, in the disease hereditary hemochromatosis, where they absorb more iron from the gut, it can only be two to four times more iron. Guess what? If you're eating meat, you got four times the iron absorption as you do from plants. Some of that iron will accumulate in the pituitary gland of the brain, the hormonal control center, and that can lead to secondary hypogonadism, lowering of testosterone, can lead to decreased libido, decreased sperm, decreased uh, testosterone, decreased erectile function. So you don't want to be, that's another reason not to eat meat. Okay, estrogenic chemicals, because guys think, you know, eating meat's real macho, and it's actually not what you want to be doing for your testosterone. Well, that's a big topic. We're not going to get into all that right now, but just be aware that iron overload is not working in your favor for good testosterone and good uh, erectile function. Estrogenic chemicals, real common, super common as preservatives, aluminum as well, and deodorants. They're in most of these skin creams, sunscreens, moisturizers, cologne, soap, shampoo, and I'd also say don't be rubbing estrogenic chemicals on your private parts. And you think I'm joking. I can tell you, every parent knows as soon as the boys hit uh, their teenage years, all of a sudden their showers get a lot longer. 
And there's a lot of estrogenic preservatives in these shampoos, in these soaps, in these moisturizers. When I was in college, there was a guy who um, probably was doing that sort of thing every day. He had a big collection of uh, magazines to that effect. And, you know, I was a fraternity. I lived in an athlete fraternity, all the football players and wrestlers, a lot of baseball players. And uh, so anyways, you know, we had uh, pizza one night. We're in this guy's room. We're eating the pizza. And I'm looking around. Where's the napkin? You know, there's no napkins. And so there was a towel on the ground. He just grabbed it to, you know, wipe my hands. Off. And the guy goes, hey, what are you doing with my spank rag? All right. Well, <laughs> anyways, um, meat changes the gut flora. There's two basic types of gut flora. There is the... Uh, plant-based flora, which live off the fiber from plants. Plants are basically carbohydrate and fiber. Meat is basically fat and protein, so they produce a different type of gut flora. Processed food does pretty much the same thing as meat. Those are two main types of gut flora. The point being is that the gut flora related to meat and processed food, they deconjugate the estrogens. Estrogens normally are excreted from the body uh, in the bile that goes out in the feces. That's the way the body lowers its estrogen level. And in the liver, to facilitate their solubility in the bile, they're conjugated with something like glucuronic acid. Okay, it makes them a little more water-soluble. Because the bile, even though it's got tons of cholesterol, it's, it's got a, a water-solubility component, uh, aqueous solution-like component, that uh, conjugation with the glucuronic acid, for example, makes the estrogen more soluble and facilitates excretion. And what I'm saying here is the... Gut flora bacteria related to a meat diet and a processed food diet has more of the enzyme glucuronidase. It'll deconjugate the um, estrogen and then it gets absorbed back into the body. So that's one way that um, a meat diet increases estrogen levels. Okay, um, estrogen levels in the water. Yeah, there's a lot of estrogenics. They don't get completely filtered out by municipal water filtration. Um, also, they put aluminum in as a clarifier. Aluminum is a metallic estrogen. Um, it affects the estrogen pathway. Uh, non-organic food, especially atrazine, but there's other things in non-organic food. You want to avoid things like soy, tons of estrogen, and uh, flax. Also, tons even more than soy estrogenics. I, I would stay away from that stuff if you're concerned about estrogenic. Um, dairy has high amounts of estrogen. They'll either give anabolic uh, estrogen to the animal, especially if they're getting it ready for slaughter to eat. Um, also, there's a lot of, they now have milk coming from the cows when they're pregnant, so they produce tons of estrogen. That's a common reason for kids going to precocious puberty, drinking too much whole milk. So, it used to be the big weightlifter book was, you know, 30 pounds in 30 days of squats, you know, squat every day, drink a gallon of milk every day, and you'll gain 30 pounds in a month. But with all the estrogen in it, you know, again, that's counterproductive. Uh, there's other things that can lead to decreased pituitary function with relation to secondary hypogonadism. You know, significant traumatic brain injury can do that. It can sort of shake the pituitary stalk, impair pituitary function. Testicular trauma, yeah, of course you want to avoid that. Then there's some rare medical conditions, testicular torsion, and that can be a twisting of the testicle. And that's especially related to something called a bell clapper defect, so that's uncommon. Kleinfelter syndrome is a XXY, extra X chromosome. That's uncommon, but associated with uh, smaller testicles. Um, you know, varicoceles, big dilated veins in the scrotum can warm up the testicles and, you know, be associated with infertility. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of guys have chronic pain. Well, I'm not going to get into vasectomy, but I don't think it's a good idea. I have a separate lecture on that. Uh, one guy who knows a lot about <clears throat> testosterone chemistry is Dr. Anthony J. That's his YouTube channel, Dr. Anthony J. And I like the guy. He did his PhD in biochemistry, so he does know a lot about testosterone itself. But when it comes to nutrition, he's young, so he's kind of an ignoramus on nutrition. Almost all young guys are ignoramuses on nutrition. They're still in that macho phase. I have to eat meat. Me be big, strong man. It's stupid. Okay, uh, so he likes saunas, and I think he's wrong about that too. But why do I still like the guy? Because he's good about chemistry. He's a biochemist. He's, he's a smart guy. So anyways, I hope that helps you to protect your testicles from atrophy and maintain your testosterone.